Today we are going to talk about diabetes. Diabetes simulation resources to improve your patient care experiences can be found all over. In this video, we're going to talk about some of our favorites. Welcome back to the channel, SimTribe. The timestamp topics we are discussing can be found in the description along with links to resources. My favorite one is last, so please stick around. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month here in the U.S., and Thanksgiving was last week, so it is a great time to talk about training for diabetes care and debrief what we covered. Wilford Brimley died this year. He brought tremendous attention to the disease with his special pronunciation that you heard at the beginning of this video. So if people know about it, why do we simulate diabetes? More than 30 million people in the U.S. or almost 10% of the population had diabetes in 2015. Many people have it and don't know. Of the patients that are currently hospitalized, over 25% of them have diabetes. As it is a common reason people come to the hospital or is something likely impacting their care, we need to train to deal with it. The main items we teach about diabetes to help care learners in our labs are recognition, evaluation, test testing, and treatment. Diabetes care is also a major opportunity in our curriculum to tackle cultural competence. For recognition of diabetes, I often use patient actors and patient simulators. I really like using patient actors for these to talk about how much they've been eating or drinking recently. Having a simulator can let us show more advanced diabetic ketoacidosis or insulin shock scenarios. Having a parent or a teacher present in these scenarios can really add to the suspension of disbelief. Task trainers are excellent for teaching the measurement of blood glucose, and I like can combining them with standardized patients. One of the cases that we run occasionally also uses our learners as the patient. Another tool I like to use is emphasizing parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships are how people relate to characters in movies or TV. By saying the name Paul Blart, learners form a mental image of their patient. In Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, the character failed the police exam because of a hypoglycemic episode. This can really aid with our learners establishing a suspension of disbelief for our training. Comment below if you have a favorite scene in a movie or TV that talks about diabetes. Wikipedia makes it easy for us with their list of films featuring diabetes article. Point of care glucose measurement has been a problem for simulation scenarios in the past. Many of us have old clinical equipment or even broken glucometers to use as props, but very little by way of showing a device with a real abnormal measurement on it. There are two options that I really like now. The Pocket Nurse Glucosim is a realistic assessment tool designed for use in simulations. The other thing I really like is the POC kit app that was released by iSimulate earlier this year. You can download it to your iPhone. You set the measurement and then it will run it the next time and give you the measurement that you wanted. Salus Education has a couple of kits that I think are really worthwhile. Their diabetes skills training kit is a great all-in-one solution. Their emergency glucagon administration training kit is also exceptional. The team at Johnson County Community College has put together the SA Finger Stick Trainer. What makes this so nice is that you can use it with a real glucometer on the fingertip of a standardized patient or simulator. You mix what you need and you're ready to go. Demo Dose produces both insulin pen trainers and simulated insulin and you can get both of those directly from Pocket Nurse. I should mention that I'm not an affiliate or sponsored by any of the companies that I just mentioned. Who knows, maybe in the future I will be. There are many scenarios available to deal directly with diabetes and related complications. You can find links to the cases I'm about to describe in the description below. These pictures are actually from one of my favorite cases where I have the residents show up in the hospital school. I like the candy on the table as a context clue if they happen to be looking around. I pull a lot of cases for MedEd Portal. I may need to modify them, but they're a great starting point. I reviewed this diabetes roadmap case right before the beginning of Diabetes Awareness Month and it really helped frame how I approach the month. Cultural competence is a major challenge for most medical school curriculums, and this is one month where we're able to really tackle it as we approach how people need to treat others with diabetes. We use these as tabletop exercises that really manage to get a very fruitful conversation going around this topic. I also use a lot of cases out of PubMed. This research study used standardized patients to look at how to talk to patients about their glycemic control with food. We use this as a round table to discuss and brainstorm how you would approach this with a patient. I try and do a new case every year. This one caught my attention because of the focus on telehealth. I failed dramatically at pulling together an interprofessional team to walk through this case. Clearly this is something I'm going to need to try again with a different group, but I think we can really make this work given the flow and information that they provided. I reached out to this team to try and use their WhatsApp simulation for next year. This is an excellent application of that technology into learning. Before I talk about my 
favorite diabetes simulation, I want to bring up the team-based learning obstetric rotation scenarios. This gestational diabetes case is probably the one that I run the most, so I'm a bit biased. And now for my favorite case. This case was published way back in 2013, but remains one of my favorite examples of how to create empathy and true understanding for the learners. This five-day long immersive simulation makes every one of our learners become a patient. The learners test themselves four times per day, which really hits the impact of physical and psychosocial parts of this disease. Additionally, they administer a small dose of normal saline to themselves to simulate the insulin. All of that while keeping a written log of what they eat and how much exercise they get. Please subscribe, hit that like button, and if you want to check out another video while you're here, check out one of these.